Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. So today, uh, previously we discussed about um, combined stations. So we left with two stations. Today we will be discussing about prostate examination and fundoscopy. And after that, we'll be doing uh, most nine history stations, including ophthalmology and ear. Uh, so uh, we will see uh, in the exam combined examination stations, we will see videos as well. In ophthalmology, we will see how we can differentiate between different conditions like AR, MD, cataract, and other differential diagnosis. In ear, we will see uh, how we can differentiate between Meniere's disease, BPPV, and uh, vestibular neuritis on the basis of um, dizziness spells. So uh, it would be almost two hours lecture. So we will try to finish it in two hours. Okay, so let's start with important points. Important points are similar like previous combined stations. We, uh, we were doing in the previous stations like what are the important points? How to become a safe doctor? How to show the examiner that we are a safe doctor? So these are the points that you need to follow each and every time. You enter into the room, you have taken a good history, but before commencing the uh, examination, you have to explain it to the patient and uh, if there is a need uh, for chaperone or for chaperone and take consent. These three things are important and then uh, focused examination. Do not, uh, do not perform all the steps of the examination, just uh, the steps that are needed to diagnose that certain condition. You just need, uh, you just have to perform that specific, uh, specific portion of the specific uh, step of the uh, uh, examination. For example, in prostate examination, you just have to ins uh, insert finger and uh, look for prostate. Do not go for hemorrhoids, do not go for any other pathologies. Because in the history, uh, he, uh, the, the patient would be requesting for PSA. We will see how we can um, perform it in under one minute. Then, uh, Oh, all right, at the end, say thank you to the patient. And if there is something to discard, discard everything and uh, explain uh, patient the examination findings in a way that patient can understand. In a simple language, do not use medical jargons. And uh, at the end, management, if there is a referral, then um, a referral pathway. So th this, this approach we'll be following in uh, our upcoming two scenarios of uh, thalmoscopy, uh, fundoscopy, and in prostate examination. Let's start with the first, uh, first scenario. Who you are? You are FY2 in GB surgery. A 55-year-old male has made an appointment to see you talk and address. You will have good 90 seconds outside the cubicle, but uh, there would be none of, not much information. So what you're going to do is that just just look at this 55 years old. Just make a mind that it's a, it's a male and 55 years old. So you might have to ask a few questions like housing, mobility, or independency. You can just remind uh, these three questions when you are standing outside because you do not know what's going inside. When you, are, when you enter into the room, patient would say, I want to get tested for PSA doctor. Uh, this comes in number of ways because every time GMC changes its scenarios. Sometimes the patient would abruptly say that, doctor, I want to get tested for PSA. Sometimes they do not talk. You start your um, consultation with the groups. You ask them, what do you want? How can I help you today? Then they would say, doctor, I want PSA test. So it uh, don't, uh, don't do not confuse yourself. It can be started at any uh, at any way, like in the from the patient or from you side as well. So okay, uh, I understand that you want PSA, but before we discuss more about this test, can I confirm few details? Confirm name and date of birth and um, the pref uh, name preference, and then start the station. And, okay, I, I understand that. Why exactly do you want this test? There might be a number of reasons. 
So um, all right, um, he would probably say this. One of my uh, friend for prostate cancer and it has spread, and he is worried of, uh, that he could have such uh, such kind of condition. Do not worry. Do not. Uh, I am here to help you. I will be asking you a few questions. Would that be fine for you? Just take permission from the patient that I am going to ask you a few questions to diagnose it. He is worried. His friend got prostate cancer. Now he is here for a PSA and antigen or test. So he's worried. Now, now it's your turn that you, you have to act as a safe doctor. So how are you going to act as a safe doctor? You just ask the patient that why exactly he wants and now you have to confirm it either he has those symptoms or not. So you, uh, you will ask prostate symptoms which are frequency, dribbling, hesitancy, nocturia, incomplete voidance. Um, I'm sure that Dr. Hamid has told you about how to take history or uh, Okay, this, 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 this was the uh, history taking part. So you all already know that how to take history. If the patient is uh, there for the first presentation and if there's no pain or uh, when did it start or in, uh, in this scenario, you have to ask about frequency. Like, um, are you going to, uh, going to toilet more often or... Um, what are the other questions about dribbling? Do you think that uh, after um, after emptying your bladder into the in the, in the toilet, uh, there are few drops that uh, that uh, that uh, you you have noticed on your clothes, hesitancy, nocturia, and and and, and any night symptoms or incomplete avoidance? Like you need to pee more. So these are the questions that uh, you need to ask to rule out any prostate symptoms or conditions. Specific question like family history, because he is concerned about prostate cancer. His friend got prostate cancer, so you should ask about family history. Is there anyone in the family with the cancer or the with any symptoms of prostate? He has some understanding of what is prostate, so it won't, it won't be difficult to ask questions. Rule out all the DTs, systemic review, red flags. About ask about weight loss. You know, uh, you are uh, you are here uh, ruling out prostate cancer. Uh, ask about meds and alcohol. Okay. All right. So now, okay. So when he would say about the friend, how you're going to proceed? I am sorry about your friend. Is he okay? So uh, he would say that he is fine or he died, then console, then show some empathy emotions. What exactly is PSA? He would ask you this question. You can say there is a prostate specific antigen or uh, why it is, um, it, it is used to check the uh, health of the prostate, a gland that sits on the neck of the bladder. In a, in a simple way, in a way that the uh, patient can understand, you have to uh, just explain it. This this thing you don't have to explain this to the patient. This is for you. There's um uh, there's in, in NHS there's there's no screening program for uh, prostate. But if the patient requests you, uh, and if he is above fifty, then uh, you can uh, go for testing. So in this scenario, at the end you will go for testing of PSA. But in this scenario, you have to perform prostate examination as well. So we will be seeing that when to start and how to do the prostate. But before that, let's discuss a few questions. He might ask these questions at the end, not in the beginning, at the end after the prostate examination. So he might ask, what does it mean if it's high? So it doesn't mean it's cancer. It can be a high number of conditions. These are, these are the conditions. It's four to five, four to five conditions in which prostate can be, can have, PSA levels can be raised or if it's low, it doesn't exclude cancer as well. So uh, now I need to examine you to see the health of your prostate. Either you need PSA uh, antigen of this test or not. So can I continue? Explain in a way that patient can understand. This is the proper way. I need to perform rectal examination. Uh, it will involve inserting a finger in your back passage or NS. So it, it shouldn't be painful. Uh, I will be. Uh, I will remain as gentle as possible. Explain like this. You, now you have explained it. Now take consent. Can I proceed? And in the meantime, you can offer chaperone as well. One of the staff members will be present throughout the examination. 
Now you have taken the permission, gathered your equipment. There would be steel eye gloves, there would be a uh, Vaseline more probably as a lubricant, and uh, you would be um, there would be apron, or sometimes there is no apron. So now uh, this inspection part. Inspection part should not take more than five seconds. Just go there, check. Uh, it would be just a mannequin. There would be nothing. Okay, now lubricate your uh, finger and wand. This is the important thing. This again comes in the safety. Now you are going to insert finger, wand patient. I am going to insert finger. All right. Now uh, just examine it at 360 degree. Uh, it would take almost 10 to 20 seconds. Uh, you do not have to uh, note all these things this is just for information. Do not verbalize these things like I'm checking size, location, or is there any hard stool or tenderness? No, you do not have to verbalize these things. How you check the tenderness? Is there any pain? Just ask this question. I'm going to insert finger. If there's any pain, just let me know. When you are examining continuously, like one to two times or three times, you can ask, is there any pain? James or whatever the name, is there any pain? And the final steps, withdraw your finger, just show, uh, inspect whether there's a blood or mucus, just show the examiner that you are checking your finger and then cover the patient and uh, thank the patient document everything. Uh, you have to verbalize it, I am a document in the medical notes because there are no notes there. Now uh, you sit down in front of the patient and explain. I have just examined your prostate, the gland that uh, you are uh, you want the test for. It's uh, I I believe that it's normal. But as you are saying that you need PSA test, so we will continue with it. We will send you a uh, blood tests or to check PSA levels. Uh, then uh, discuss if if he asks you about a doctor if it's cancer then what, what would happen? Uh, because his friend got cancer, he might ask you questions. Like if it's cancer, okay. If, if, if it's uh, prostate cancer, then uh, there would be watchful waiting and surgery if needed. And uh, at the end, always safety net. Back pain, weight loss, problems pain. So this is a simple approach. Let me show you the video. Okay, this is the video, this is the video. Just have a look at this.
That's great. Okay, so look at this video again. It only takes almost uh, 30 seconds, 30 to 40 seconds. So in real exam, it would be the same. Okay, and this examination really comes. This, these two, prostate and fundoscopy, these are these examinations really come. So you just have to see the video. If if these come, uh, then in the real exam, then you should have you should perform these in real settings. So let's move towards our next uh, scenario: it's fundoscopy. So again, you are referred to an emergency department. This is important. You are in emergency department. So. Remember one thing, most of the patients, if uh, they are coming in emergency department, then uh, you cannot uh, send them home immediately. You need to admit them for a while so that seniors can review. So in this scenario, we will be seeing that we are going to do this, the same uh, scheme. So who is your patient? She's uh, MRY and she's 60 years old, lady who has been referred to the hospital by GP with visual loss. So, Please take history, perform relevant examination, discuss initial management with the patient. Okay, this scenario comes as a history taking uh, scenario as well, and as uh, the perform, uh, you have to perform it like combined station. This comes in both ways. We will be seeing that how we're going to perform the fundoscopy. Uh, yes, that's a good question, but there is a mannequin. You can explain position like this. Uh, I have written it in the steps. Uh, okay, uh, this is the uh, position that uh, you are going to verbalize it, like explain position that they will need to remove their underwear and lie on the clinical examination couch, covering themselves with the sheet provided. Uh, okay, so you just have to verbalize this. Uh, let that the patient, you can say, you can alter this uh, condition, uh, this position, like uh, ask, uh, say the uh, patient that uh, you should bring your knees close to your tummy. You can say it like this. Because it would be a mannequin, uh, you will, uh, when you are going to perform in real uh, settings in the, in the exam, then you you will not have to verbalize the position. Sometimes you forget and uh, you just stand up, explain it and start the procedure. If you think that you need to verbalize it, the position also, then you can say that, uh, please remove uh, your underwear. I need to examine your back passage and uh, um, bring your knees closer, close to your tummy. So in a simple way, you can say, you can uh, ask the position, uh, just verbalize the position in this way. I hope this clears. All right, that's great. Uh, okay, so it's fundoscopy. Uh, okay, I was, I was talking about this scenario. This comes in two ways. One is you have to perform fundoscopy and other is they just give you the findings. That is the normal and uh, you continue history taking and management part. So there's only one scenario in which you have to perform fundoscopy and it's normal. Remember, one scenario and it's normal. There's no pathology uh, when you will uh, see the uh, back, back side, back space of the eye, you will not find any pathological findings. So it would be normal. Okay, let's move further. Okay, th this is the patient history. She is 60 year old and uh, she presented to the hospital with visual loss and headache. And uh, when uh, you will compute your history, all those steps, like what has an, uh, no pain symptoms and um, the complete history, when you will take the history, then she would be saying all these things uh, that she doesn't have any weight loss. Uh, she have muscle pains and shoulder and hip uh, pain, one-sided headache. When you are going, when you are taking the history, uh, something would click in your mind that some deep di uh, differential diagnosis. Uh, what these differential diagnoses should be? These should be like this: uh, GCA. If there is one-sided unilateral headache, and uh, she would be saying that when I, doctor, whenever I touch my uh, like scalp, it, it it hurts. So it it shows that it is there is a tenderness 
on the right side or the left side of the head. So it, it might be possible that it's genital arthritis. And uh, genital arthritis is always associated with um, polymyalgia rheumatica. So you need to ask about joint pains as well. So whenever you uh, stand up from sitting position, do you feel that you feel uh, difficulty in doing this? Uh, do you feel difficulty in combing your hairs? So you need to ask polymyalgia rheumatic questions and genital arthritis questions. And rule out other dif differential diagnosis like stroke, brain tumors, retinal detachment, because the main symptom in this scenario was problem with the vision. You are just asking other questions about polymyalgia rheumatica and genital arthritis to uh, make a probable diagnosis. Because you're not sure why the lady is having visual problems or visual loss. There's two main symptoms, visual loss and headache. So that's why you're taking history for all these things. So these, these are the questions. Uh, she might ask you when uh, in the ICE portion, ICE portion, when you would ask patient that, uh, is there any specific concerns do you have? She would ask you, will I get uh, my vision back or uh, will it get worsen or what is it doctor? So you would say that I need an examination. After that, I will get back to you. I will explain everything to you. Okay, and um, so you have taken a good history. Uh, now, there's something in the history part, it is clear that it's genital arthritis and that's why she's having visual problems. Now you would say that I need to examine uh, your eye. And remember, in the examination stations, the cubicle would be uh, the bigger, it would be a bigger room. So you will have an idea and outside the station, outside the cubicle, it would be written that perform relevant examination. So if it's written, then you need to exam examine eye or do uh, or do fundoscopy. So how we are going to do this eye examination, get the equipment, ophthalmoscope, ophthalmoscope and mediatic eye drops. Usually eye drops are not there. You just, um, you can mention them. Uh, they will not give you any mediatic eye drops. Then explain, explain a friendly language. How? I will be using a magnifying tool. This is of thermoscope, show it to the patient that this is the thermoscope. I am using this to look back of your eyes. This is a simple way to explain what you are going to do. Uh, and also, I will uh, I will place my hand on your forehead. That is necessary because you are going to touch the patient. You need to mention it. And why? Because uh, uh, we, sh we, sh uh, we should not bump into each other. Uh, okay, Men I mentioned about the eye drops for the examiner that I'm going to dilate, uh, dilate the pupils. Then again, perform the fundoscopy. If you are going to perform right eye, fundoscope should be in your right hand and your right eye and your right eye. Go ahead and perform. It would be normal finding. You will find nothing. So after that, explain. You need to check visual equity as well. It if um, they, they, again, there are two possibilities. They might give you something on the paper. If they no, do not give you, there would be a silent chart. You can ask the patient to read the silent chart or if uh, he, she is unable to read the silent chart, do finger count. Can you count my fingers? No, wave your hands. Can, uh, can you uh, notice any movement of my hands? If not, then uh, throw some light. Uh, but usually there is a Snellen chart. If there is no Snellen chart, they give you findings on the paper. So there are two ways or three ways. Remember, always GMC alters uh, these stations from time to time. Uh, in, the, in the previous week, uh, patient, uh, the scan readers were saying that it was like there was a Snellen chart. In the other week, they will be saying that there were, there were no Snellen chart. You have to perform visual equity by your fingers or by the waving of your hand. So you should be prepared for everything if it comes at any, in any way. Okay, assess cough, hip and uh, shoulder tenderness. Why? Again, you are um, making your probable diagnosis. You are uh, ruling in genital uh, arthritis and polymyalgia rheumatica. So that's why you ask the patient to stand up from the chair and um, without support and crossing hand over arms. This is for polymyalgia rheumatica. Okay, explain examination findings to the patient. There is a scalp tenderness, complete loss of vision, right or left eye. There is a vision, but fundoscopy is normal. 
So now explain why she is having uh, this eye problem. Now you are suffering from a condition called giant cell arthritis. Have you ever heard about it? No, it is the inflammation of the arteries in your temporal area as well as arteries supplying blood to the eye. This can lead to loss of vision and pain in the temporal region. So that's why you are having these eye problems. This is the reason. Now she would ask doctor, so what is the management? Now she would ask these questions. Uh, these, what are you going to do for me? Will I get my vision back? How are you going to treat me? Okay, if uh, you mention about biopsy, she would ask what is uh, what is biopsy, how it is done? How long will it take for steroid? You we will be discussing with management portion. So uh, she would be asking about three questions. You have to address them at that time because now is the time to address concerns. You have taken history, you have made proper diagnosis. Okay, this is the management portion. Okay, uh, so remember, where was the patient in emergency? What you're going to do? Admit. So you're going to admit patient or sending a rheumatology referral. Rheumatologist will come and see the patient. Investigations, uh, baseline, inflammatory markers, ESR, and discuss treatment options. So I um, I think that it is uh, polymerogenic medica, but I'm not sure. But the treatment is steroids. You might have to take these steroids for two to three years. Then she would ask you questions, doctor, are steroids safe? What are the side effects of steroids? She might ask you about, I have written all these side effects. There are uh, four more common side effects. These are the hypertension, diabetes mellitus, osteoporosis, and damage lining of the stomach. But we will be taking care. How? For the stomach, we will be giving you uh, omeprazole or um, uh, PPIs, osteoporosis, bisphosphonates, diabetes mellitus, uh, we will be treating it. If it is diagnosed and for hypertension, there are medicines. Okay, in this scenario, she would not ask specifically about the side effects or, uh, or she would not say you to explain each and everything or how you're going to protect me. It's for other scenarios. It is possible that uh, the patient would say that, doctor, I, uh, I was diagnosed with uh, there, there is a scenario in the, in the real, uh, in this exam, that the, it is a phone call. The patient would say that, doctor, I was diagnosed with polymyalgia rheumatica. GP put me on steroids. I have been taking these steroids for uh, one week, uh, but I did not understand uh, the steroid side effects. Could you please repeat those for me? And uh, please tell me how to protect myself. So this is the one scenario. There's another scenario with a different history. In that scenario, you have to explain all these uh, three to four to five uh, side effects of steroids and how you're going to protect it. In this scenario, uh, you just have to name these uh, uh, three or four to five if she asks. If she doesn't ask, then you do not have to tell the side effects of steroids. Okay. And uh, for the confirmation, we need to take a biopsy. Doctor, what is biopsy? We will be needing a small sample from your temporal region, from uh, the uh, this artery. You know, we are suspecting that there is inflammation. To diagnose it, explain that she can understand. Okay, and she will also be reviewed by eye doctor. Will I get my vision back? Okay, with this condition, once you lose your uh, vision, it is not possible to get that vision back. Okay, I'm so sorry to tell you that if uh, with this condition, if you lose your um, this vision, uh, the chances are less likely that you will you would get back your vision. But we will start treatment to prevent further damaging of your vision. First, this is a bad news. Say sorry and show some emotions. Second, the uh, the good news that we can prevent prevent it. Uh, okay, all right, and it's uh, giant cell arthritis. What is it? It is inflammation of the arteries in your temporal area. Okay, this can lead to a vision and pain in temple. All right, so this is uh, the fundoscopy examination. This really comes, and if it comes, remember fundoscopy. On the fundoscopy, uh, it would be a normal examination. They just they are just checking either you are safe doctor or not. How explain the patient what you are going to do? You are going to check the back chamber, back chamber of the eye. But how it is an uh, instrument called thermoscope? And um, can I proceed? I am going to touch your. Um, I am going to put my hand on your um, forehead so that we can we should not bump into each other. 
just acts like you know everything and you care for the patient. Can I proceed? Can I examine your eye? So, uh, and at the end say thank you. Show the examiner that you have followed all the uh, safety features and the steps that are needed for, um, for the examination. So that's how you are going to do the fundoscopy. So that's it. We have done two scenarios, two combined stations, prostate and fundoscopy. I will show you the video of fundoscopy at the end of this lecture. Okay, so now the history taking. There are the, these, the eye and the ENT stations, the ear, mainly the involvement of the ear. In these scenarios, again, you know very well how to take history, you know the diagnosis, everything. But again, you there are there are points for history taking, there are points for management, there are points for interpersonal skills. How you are going to uh, how you're going to get maximum marks? You need to discuss all these important points in your consultation. Always remember, if the patient comes with any eye problem, ask about driving. How have you come here? Do you drive? So it is important because in most of the eye conditions, you ask the patient to, to discuss it with DLA. And, and remember one thing, you do not discuss directly with the DV, DVLA, it's the patient who discusses it. Ask the patient to discuss DVL. You, uh, it's not your responsibility to discuss with the DVL. It's patient's responsibility. Made him um, like convince him that he should go or he sh or she should go to the DVL and discuss when he or she can drive or either she or he can drive. They would uh, run some um, assessment tests and then uh, they would tell you either uh, he or she can drive or not. So remember, do not forget about driving. Effects of life. Obviously, if the patient is having symptoms, uh, like he is having difficulty in vision or difficulty in seeing objects for the past one month, ask how it has been affecting your life. Uh, doctor, I, I cannot drive. Doctor, um, I cannot go out outside. I understand that uh, your life is getting difficult. You have you have these problems. Just stay with me. I am, we will get to the point. We will uh, make a diagnosis. Then we will treat you. Reassure a patient. Effects of life, important. Driving, important. Occupation. Again, in ear examinations, uh, there is a noise-induced hearing loss. The patient is working in a noisy factory. So you need to ask about occupation. In the eye examination, there is a station uh, uh, the, the, with the optic neuritis. The girl um, wants to do an uh, IT project. So she's worried about it. So you need to ask occupation. As well. So, and address the concerns related, related to the occupation. Family history, again important. Uh, if there, uh, it, there is a scenario of optic neuritis in which uh, her mother was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So, optic neuritis is commonly associated with multiple sclerosis. Do not forget family history as well. In acoustic neuroma, there is a history of cancer. So, do not forget family history as well. Most of the patients you will encounter in with the eye or ear problems, they would be above 60. Now, the patient is above 60 and he's having uh, and uh, he's having problems with eye or ear. Then there is a possibility that he might be living alone or he might be living with someone. Then you need to ask these three questions at any cost. How saying? Where do you live? Who else lives with you? Do you have any problems in moving around the house or doing your daily day routine works. Independency, are you independent in doing your works? So these three questions are important because if uh, he's having problem with um, like, like the housing, if the toilet is an upper, um, upper portion, then you need to address them accordingly with the help of occupational health. We'll be seeing if, the, if there's any scenario with this, uh, how to involve occupational health. But in the eye or ear sessions, uh, there is no there is uh, no scenario in which we need to involve occupational health, but you need to ask to show that you are safe doctor. Concerns in these scenarios always there are concerns. There are three to four concerns always. They are worried because the eye problems. They think that they are losing their eye, uh, their vision. They would probably ask doctor, uh, will I lose my vision? Will I get better? The concern, so always address their concern. That is the again important thing. And ear examination, again, 
Doctor, uh, will I be able to continue my job because I work in noisy, noisy environments? No, I, unfortunately, I am sorry to tell you that mm, you are uh, having ear problems because of the noisy environment. You need to change your job. How about that? Will would you change your job? So always con address their concerns. Inform DVLA. It's not your responsibility. It's patient's responsibility. Convince patients to inform DVLA about your eye and ear problems. Safety netting, always go for it. If uh, you are losing your vision, if uh, your uh, vision is deteriorating with time, if you notice any swelling, uh, redness in your eyes, if you are noticing that uh, there's a discharge from the ear or uh, you're losing your hearing, go to the extent of emergency. The warning signs, safety netting always, look after them, these carry marks. So there are uh, certain important points, driving effects on life, occupation, family history, him ask housing mobility and dependency concerns, inform DVLA, safety netting, and warning signs. These are the important points. You always need to address them in your eye and ENT stations. Okay. Let's uh, discuss what are the differential diagnosis of different eye conditions that we can encounter in real uh, in PLAPRO exam. It could be age-related uh, macular degeneration, glaucoma, cataract, and um, optic neuritis. These are the other differential diagnosis about trauma you need to ask uh, in subconductive hemorrhage, and um, the cerebrovascular accident brain tumor, diabetic retinopathy, and retinal detachment. These, I have just added these to rule out other conditions to show examiner that you're ruling out all other conditions. But in real exam, you will get ARMD, glaucoma, cataract, and subconjunctival hemorrhage. Okay, let's see what are the questions, important questions to differentiate different conditions. Okay, so it's ARMD, age-related macular degeneration. Straight lines appear wavy. You need to ask this question directly. So, um, Emmy, do you think that uh, when uh, you look into the light, the straight lines become um, wavy? So she would say, yes, doctor. Have you ever bumped into things which are directly in front of you? Do you have any problems reading? Or do you have gray or black patches in your visual areas? So these are the four to five questions that would uh, make your diagnosis of ARMD. In glaucoma, there are hello circles around the eyes. In cataract as well. In both these, there are uh, the hellos. You can, uh, the patient would say there are hellos um, around the light. Pain and redness in the eye, ask about it. Uh, the, uh, in acute anterior glaucoma, there would be pain. However, in chronic glaucoma, there would be no pain. So you need to, uh, whenever when you will be taking history, Later on, we will be discussing these two conditions as well. In cataract, frequently changing uh, glasses and the halos around the eyes. There are a few more other conditions like trauma, cerebrovascular accident. There are the questions that you need to ask to rule out all other conditions. Have you ever been hurt by, um, have you hit by something in the eyes? And now these are red flags. Bilateral loss of vision, uh, rapid deterioration, suspected CS pathology, loss of independence, neurological symptoms, visual field defects, HIV infection. If you find any one of them, refer patient immediately to the extent emergency, or if he's in extent emergency, immediately uh, ask senior or get concern from, uh, uh, from ophthalmology department. Uh, and try to ask two to three red flags in each and every scenario. You need to ask these, show the examiner that you are on a safe side. Okay, let's discuss about ARMD. What are the important questions? These are the important questions. And we will see how we're going to ask these questions and how we are going to man, uh, ma make a diagnosis of ARMD. So, who you are? You are FY2 in GP surgery. A 69 years old woman uh, has been referred by the optician. Talk to the patient and address concerns. All right. I understand that you have, okay. So you can start. You have good 90 seconds outside this cubicle. You enter into the room. Now you know that she has been referred by the optician. I understand that you have been referred by the optician after grips, obviously. Then uh, would you please tell me what option optician did tell you? Like you can show a patient that you know about the past. 
what has happened so far so she would uh, she would say each and everything this is the patient information uh, you cannot see and find it difficult to read optician because you wanted to change your glasses as you thought it might help she has been uh, changing glasses for the past one year i guess problem with your vision for the last one year right again lines appear wavy directly ask this question do you think that uh, the uh, lines appear wavy in front of you yes doctor and for how long? For past three to four months. The rest of the history is same. You need to ask, to, uh, rule out all these conditions, differential diagnosis. You need to ask about past history, systemic um, inquiry, and allergic history, and family history, and everything. Complete your history. Everything would be normal. It says that uh, she eats, eats a healthy and balanced diet, cholesterol, no hypertension, no diabetes. Everything is normal. Not nothing like curtain falling down. It's a retinal detachment. In retinal detachment, there, is, there are floaters, flashing lights, and uh, the curtain falling down. Uh, nowadays, retinal detachment is not coming, but previously, before COVID, there was a scenario of retinal detachment. In that scenario, you need to ask about floaters and flashing lights, and uh, there is a curtain falling down. So these are the questions that um, you need to ask to do a lot of differentials. Uh, these are the questions she might ask you at the end when um, you will be discussing about the management. So let's move further. You have taken a good history. Now there's something in your mind that you have asked questions of ARMD. It's clear that uh, the diagnosis uh, is going for ARMD. Now you need to examine. Same observations. I would like to take your temperature, pulse, respiratory, and blood pressure. And I would like to do fundoscopy. I would like to see your back chamber or back of your eyes. So uh, what it, the doctor, the examiner or the patient would give you this, these findings. Bilateral retinal drusen. So now it's clear that it's ARMD. Let me show you what it's retinal drusen. <laughs> this is the picture of uh, retinal drusen. Okay. It would be like this. Uh, they, they, they would be able to give you findings. You do not need to perform fundoscopy in this, uh, in this investigation. They would give you findings. Only it would be written that bilateral retinal drusen on the page. Remember, if there is a bilateral drusen, it's ARMD. You check the, uh, you mentioned other uh, examinations, visual equity, visual field examination. Check your Uh, check the visual, uh, perform all of the, mention all of the relevant examinations. Remember, you do not need to perform fundoscopy. They will give you findings on a page. And then explain, what is it? It's ARMD. Have you ever heard about it? No. You have got degenerative changes associated with age. Mention it, both eyes. Uh, macula is a part of back chamber of your eye. It is responsible for central vision. It has been affected. May I explain this in three to four lines so that patient can understand and check understanding. Have you understood what I have just told you about your condition? All right. So would you like to discuss management? What we are, we are going to do? Okay. Refer urgently if this is metamorphosia. Metamorphosia means distorted images or visual loss that is rapid onset. Okay. Explain what the specialist would do. They examine your eyes again. Use special movement of examining your retina, back chamber of eye. And remember, where you are, you are in GP surgery. So what you're going to do, you're going to refer. And there are uh, different referral pathways. If there's metamorphosia, visual loss, and urgent referral. Otherwise, it's routine referral. Uh, thermologists, you can be offered magnifying glasses or use bright. These are the preventive measures. Um, they would give you magnifying glasses or uh, always use bright lights to read. Then, they, uh, now there's a time 
discuss more about lifestyle devices and driving. Driving is always important when the patient comes with eye problems. Okay, you can, uh, so there are a few lifestyle changes that can, um, that would be better for you and you will get benefited. Should we discuss those? Yes, doctor. You need to stop, if you are, uh, if she's uh, smoking, then you need to stop smoking. Uh, in, the, in the patient information, it's written that she's not smoking, so there is no need to mention about smoking or balanced diet or exercise regularly if she's doing all these things. If she's smoking, if she's not eating balanced diet or she's not uh, doing exercise, then you, can, you need to mention all these things. Driving, again, advice uh, to avoid driving and inform DLA. Inform DVLA, uh, convince the patient to inform DVLA. You do not need to inform DVLA. Uh, sometimes there are certain medications that are suitable that would be given to you by a eye doctor. So that's why we are going to refer you to the eye specialist. Safe netting, it delays uh, more than one week or symptoms become worse. You should get ophthalmology clinic at once or uh, if uh, you do not get to the uh, clinic in two weeks time, then uh, uh, you should go to the ophthalmology clinic or eye clinic. Okay. The, this one uh, with ARMD. Okay, this ARMD. And it's great. This scenario is coming. Obviously, this is important scenario. This ARMD cataract. These are the important scenarios. These they usually come. Okay, all right. This is the cataract one. So let's move towards our second. This is cataract. So who you are? You are ever doing GP surgery. Lena Adam, 70 years old, has made an appointment to see you assess, discuss management, and negotiate. Remember important points. You need to ask about drive. So if, uh, and how you want to ask about drive, how have you come here? Doctor, I, I drove by myself. Then you need to address it. You need to call someone to take you to the to home. So let's uh, move further. Check the patient information. It's blurry vision for one year, progressing difficulty driving, diagnosed with cataract three years ago, and um, uh, without treatment. She's not taking any kind of treatment. Uh, prescription glasses she is um, uh, for reading, and um, uh, she frequently uh, visits uh, optician to change glasses. Uh, but she loved to drive and uh, GP told her not to drive. So you need to address it uh, in the in the ice portion or in the management as well to get maximum marks. So this is the past history. She is hypertensive for five years, uh, BP controlled osteoporosis for three years, medications like drawnic acid and nordipine and dapamide and regular follow-ups and uh, no smoking alcohol and family history. Okay, so, all right. Now, uh, you, you, you understand your task outside the uh, cubicle, now you enter into the room and you have, you start you're taking your history. She would be, in, she would tell you all these things. Now it's, uh, now the diagnosis should be clear in your mind that there's a problem with the eyes. Again, you come uh, to this point, how did you arrive today? Have you been driving? In the ice portion, okay, and uh, in the ice, you when you would ask about concerns, she would say that I, I I'm unable um, to read for long times. Don't worry, I need to examine you. After that, um, uh, we will see what's going on. Okay, these are the questions. These are questions that she would be asking after uh, revealing diagnosis. So uh, you get to the point, go to the examination, and start your examinations. Um, just mention fundoscopy and visual equity, and um, you will, uh, the, the examiner would give you uh, the findings, and it would be like this. Okay, it would, it, the picture would be like this. Simple uh, eye picture without fundoscopy and uh, there would be white eye. It would be clear that, uh, clear that uh, it, it should be clear that it, it is, it is uh, cataract. 
So in the, uh, in, the in this scenario, you will be easily uh, diagnose this cataract. It would be like this. This picture will be shown to you by the examiner. Remember this one. All right. Now you uh, you have made up your uh, diagnosis. Now it's time to explain it to the patient. Cataract. Have you ever heard about it? No. Cataract is a clouding of the lens in the eye, which can reduce transparency of the lens. Subsequently, it leads to gradual visual loss. Mention it, that it's a cataract, and then discuss management. Now there's an important thing. She loves to drive. In the management portion, you need to address this. Like uh, it, uh, it is advisable for you to not uh, go for driving. You should visit DVLA. They will run some assessment tests. They can better advise you how uh, either drive, drive you can drive or not. Okay, and um, uh, if cataracts is con confirmed, then you might need surgery. Now there comes an important point again. She she would ask the doctor what kind of surgery, what they would do, what specialists would do. Now you need to explain that they would uh, they would be laser surgery. They will break down uh, this white portion, small piece, and they will uh, bring all these uh, small portions out, and they will put another lens lens into your eye. So you need to explain this surgery, the eye surgery that the uh, ophthalmologist or the eye doctor is going to perform. Should ask this and addre always address concerns, driving, always ask occupation, what do you do for a living? How it is affecting your life? How uh, it's affecting? Like she is unable to read, uh, unable to read for a long time. That's why it's affecting his life. I can understand uh, things like this could be problematic sometimes, but there are treatment options available. So that's why I'm going to refer to the eye doctor. Would you visit eye doctor? Just take permission as well. That, yes, okay, doctor, I will visit the eye doctor. That's great then. Okay, these are the questions. Remember, she might ask one or two questions. What is cataract? What will you do? Will I get vision back? Is progressive, but cataract surgery has proven to be effective. Drive again? Yes, you will be able to drive again after the surgery. That are reassurance. So these are the questions, five to six questions. Just go through them and you will be at a better position to answer them when it would come in real exam. Remember again, show safety. Ask about driving, occupation, effects on life, manage in the management portion, address driving, DVLA, and uh, explain about the surgery, how it's going, uh, how the eye doctor is going to perform it and how you will get benefited. And you will be able to drive again. Okay, we have discussed ARMD and cataract. Now is the time to discuss glaucoma. Okay, glaucoma uh, is a scenario that com which comes with the eye pain. Okay, so no, uh, none of the uh, other none of the scenarios come with the eye pain. It's the only scenario that comes with the eye pain. It's glaucoma, acute angular glaucoma. So you are a by two in accident emergency. Krishma, age fifty, came to the hospital with redness in her eye. Take history of suspicion. This is the patient information. Uh, the pain uh, in the left eye, and always ask about the other eye as well. Remember again one thing, uh, one more thing. Uh, in the eye and ear scenarios, you need to ask about the right or left both. You need to compare right and left side. So you need to ask about the other eye, other uh, ear as well. Started few hours ago, continuous and becoming worse. Sudden onset, seven on the scale of zero to ten. Took paracetamol but didn't help and headache in my left side of the head and eyebrow. So this also coincides with the G GCA. So you need to rule out GCA as well during your history. Since my uh, eye pain started blurry vision, I cannot see properly with my left eye. Vomited two times, depression for six months, taking amitriptyline. This is the uh, this uh, she will she would tell you when you would ask about past medical history or if uh, she is taking any kind of medicines. She would say about these two lines. These are the diagnostic points for glaucoma. Amitriptyline is a respect is the drug that causes glaucoma. All right, but there are two more other scenarios in the glaucoma. The patient is using below inhaler or steroid inhalers that is presented with the glaucoma. And the other, other scenario, the patient would present with chronic, chronic glaucoma. It's the optician told there's a high pressure and mother had a similar problem. So approach would be same in all these three stations. 
Uh, however, in the first two stations, you need to ask, uh, take the history of pain. In the third station, you need to ask about the condition that like what has, how it is progressing and is there anything that makes it worse or that makes it better. Okay, so now you have entered the room, you started taking your history, differential diagnosis, all these three to five things. You need to rule out all these things and they are the questions that we have discussed in the beginning. Past history, allergic history, social history, important. Occupation, important. Effects on life, important. Now comes the point where you need to examine your, uh, patient's eye. Okay, so examiner would uh, give you the picture. Red eye with dilated pupil. So there's a red eye with dilated pupil. Uh, in, in uh, Remember, in uh, GCA, cancer arthritis, there would be no dilated pupil. There would be no red eye. So in this scenario, there would be red eye and dilated pupil. So try to differentiate things. So in the real exam, you should not confuse yourself. So, and in, in another way, the patient might show the picture in the beginning. Doctor, here's the picture that optician gave it to me or uh, the, and uh, he told me that uh, should discuss with the consultant, should discuss with the GP. So you need to address uh, if the picture uh, he gives you a picture in the beginning, I need to ask a few questions so that I can I can I uh, I should be at a better place to address your concerns. Can I proceed? So you need to start uh, this scenario like this. If he shows you picture in the beginning, all right. So explain diagnosis. From our assessment, we are suspecting that you have a condition called acute anaglioglycoma. It is a condition in which a part of the eye that drains fluid becomes blocked. There's a blockage, and that's why the, the, because of that blockage, uh, there's a pressure that builds up into in, in the eye that causes this condition. That is why you are having this pain. So there's a, there's a uh, simple wordings in which you can explain. There are a few more tests called tonometry and eye pressure that use the instrument called tonometer. Treatment, we will give you some painkillers to relieve your pain. Uh, and remember, they are, they are treatment. Uh, you need to no, in the history stations, whenever you're going to uh, to, to explain uh, management or the treatment, involve patient. How are you going to involve? So uh, it's the pain, what's the Krishma? It's the Krishna, it's Krishma, Krishma, all right. So Krishma, uh, you had a pain. So for the pain, we're going to give you some painkiller, okay? So for the, uh, for, we are also going to give you some uh, eye drops that would uh, decrease fluid production. You know, you have this uh, condition because of excessive fluid production. So that's why we're going to uh, give you these eye drops. And uh, IV medications are like acetazolamide, and we need to give you some medicines to constrict pupil, pilocarpine. Uh, Do not mention these drug names. You just need to mention that we can, we, we are going to give you some eye drops and IV medications. And the reason she would ask you, doctor, why I'm having this? And the reason is the medication that you are taking depression, uh, taking for depression. And for that, we're going to refer you back to the GP for to review your medicines. GP would might change your medicines and you will get better. And remove your glasses because whenever you wear glasses, it, it dilates people, it worsens the symptoms. Whenever the pupil dilates in glaucoma, it worsens the symptoms. That's why you need to remove your glasses. Okay, refer to the specialist and the patient concerns. The questions she would ask, will I go blind? Will do I have this problem? Well, uh, if this condition, if, if you are not treated well on a time, then uh, probably you can go blind, but you are here, you are here at the right time. We're going to start your treatment. So uh, it will, prevent your further worsening of these symptoms. Just reassure patient that uh, you will get better. And prevention, uh, sh uh, you should avoid watching TV and there are some treatment options like treatment, laser treatment or surgery. Uh, just go through all this management. If you have time, then you can discuss all this management. If you do not have time, just mention important things like the treatment options, what do we have? And most importantly, about, about DVLA, or effects of life, address those concerns. And uh, about the GP, she would, uh, he would uh, change the medicines. And if uh, the comes with glaucoma with blue inhaler, she would, again, GP would change the medicines. 
and for chronic glaucoma, you're going to refer the patient on a routine referral to the specialist. They will examine eyes again, and then they would suggest some treatment options. All right. So now we are done with three uh, scenarios, ARMD, cataract, and this glaucoma. And there are three uh, scenarios in glaucoma. The approach is same for all of these. Then base optic narratives. This is the important one. This is coming more frequently. Uh, the, in this scenario, you need to ask most importantly families. There's nothing important. This also comes with eye pain. Uh, you will find nothing, uh, nothing important in the history, but you need to ask family history to make your diagnosis. Okay, and one more thing, this boyfriend got red flowers and she saw yellow. Okay, so you are a in GP surgery, 28 year old female made an appointment to see you take history and discuss management. Presenting complaints, again, there's an eye pain for four days, no swelling or redness, decrease in vision, similar episode four months ago. So it's, it is second episode. So you can now at this place, you can ask, did you visit doctor at that time? No doctor, I did not visit, all right. So how did you get better? Did it get better on her own? That's that's great. Okay, then uh, she would say this on his on her own because you do not need to ask specifically about boyfriend got red flowers. Uh, you saw yellow, or you can ask this question like this: Do you think that um, you are perceiving uh, different colors differently? So now she would say that, yeah, doctor, uh, yesterday my boyfriend got flowers and uh, those were red flowers, but I saw yellow. Okay, all right. Now now the time to complete your history. Uh, now when at the family uh, family history, she would say mother had multiple sclerosis. Now if she say multiple sclerosis, then uh, you need to ask a few questions to rule out multiple sclerosis as well. These questions. Weakness, numbness, headache, you know, issues or dysphagia. So you need to ask that either multiple sclerosis is going on or not. You can alter your history like this. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you more questions about your general condition. So could you tell me that uh, are you facing any weakness, a numbness, any headache, all these questions, okay? And what do you do for a living? An IT project manager. Doctor, I have a presentation in four days. I want to get better. She's worried. Now, now this is the time you show emotions. I understand that this is the difficult time for you. Just bear with me. I need to examine your eyes. And uh, after that, we will be at a better position to tell you whether you can go for a presentation or not. So what's important for you? Your presentation or your health? You can mention two to three things like this just to reassure a patient and then go for the examination. <clears throat> you will find reduced visual acuity, painful eye movements, and on fundoscopy optic disc not visible. Okay. Suspect optic neuritis. Why? Now you have two things to suspect it is optic neuritis. All, all right, three things. One is pain. Number two things, altered colored perception. Number three, multiple sclerosis family history. So now uh, you're clear with your diagnosis that it's optic neuritis. Unfortunately, a serious condition, if not treated, can cause visual loss. Okay, uh, we're going to refer you to the neurology. Few um, specialized investigations are needed, such as MRI. And uh, you will be admitted there. They will give you IV steroids, undergo specialist consultation. We'll get MRI and further tests. Now, address concerns. Doctor, I have a presentation uh, in four days. I'm sorry to tell you that uh, your health is important. You need to go to the specialist. There, they will run some more tests. You can ask uh, or you can discuss it with your manager that uh, he or she should uh, uh, delay your presentation. Would that be uh, easy for you? Or you can write, uh, write this on a paper that uh, uh, you are having this, uh, this condition so you cannot give that presentation. Just support, support the patient that you are here to help. Your condition, your health is important than presentation. Now, uh, when you will address these uh, concerns and about the IT manager project and about the mother, and I'm uh, hopeful that you will get maximum marks because now you are showing that you are a safe doctor and you are concerned about the patient's health, his occupation, his effects on life, and uh, you understand the situation very well. All right. 
this is all um, uh, the four scenarios of uh, I and one scenario I'm missing is subconductor hemorrhage. I guess it's redness, uh, the patient comes with redness of eye and uh, you will take his tin, you will find nothing. At the end, you just reassure that it will go away on its own. One of the differential diagnoses is trauma, OS trauma, and uh, then in the, at the management, uh, it just it's, it will go away on its own and that's it. In that scenario, you just need to be uh, rule out all of the things and ask about the safety features, safety questions about driving, about um, occupation effects of life, and all those things. So that's it. That's uh, the five uh, stations of I. Uh, we have done it. Ophthalmology. Do not forget to remember all uh, these uh, five or six important points: driving effects on life, occupation, family history, him housing mobility. If patient is above sixty. Concerns in form DVLA, safety netting, and warning signs. These are some differential diagnoses. You need to ask questions, and there are two questions that you can ask to differentiate between different conditions. Let's move towards our ears, uh, the conditions that involve ears. This is the important and a well table, uh, well oriented table. Just give it a read. This is uh, how you're going to differentiate different conditions. In BPV, duration of vertigo is for a few seconds, like 30 seconds. In Meniere's disease, it's hours to days, 10 to 15 minutes, or uh, multiple episodes, like three to four times, or associated hearing or loss of tinnitus, yes. In vestibular neuritis, it's days to weeks. More than 24 hours, and there is no hearing loss in tinnitus. Labyrinthitis, same to vestibular neuritis, but there is associated hearing loss and tinnitus. All right. Um, okay, labyrinthitis. Remember, uh, labyrinth is involved in hearing, and neuritis, vestibular neuritis is not involved in hearing loss and tinnitus. It's only vertigo, and there would be a wider infection. There would be a history of viral infection of one week. So we will be dis uh, discussing it in differential diagnosis, how we will do differentially diagnose it. So our first scenario is Meniere's disease. The patient comes with dizziness. You, uh, the, your patient is Elliot Jones, 55, presented with some concerns. You are FY2 in GP surgery. In such scenarios, there would be only one or two lines. You will not have a time, you will not um, get much of information when you will be standing outside the cubicle. So you enter into the room, you start discussing about grapes, presenting complaints, and remember those important points that we discussed in the beginning. So uh, uh, ask about dizziness. What do you exactly mean by dizziness? Doctor, it is something spinning around. All right. So ask about the uh, how many times, two weeks, uh, when did it start, two weeks ago, 10 to 15 minutes. So this dizziness lasts for 10 to 15 minutes. Remember, hours, uh, it's minutes to uh, hours. It's mostly minutes to hours, 10 to 15 minutes to minutes. It's not hours, it's minutes. So now one thing is clear that it's not BPV. It's not vestibular neuritis. It's it it, should, it could be meniere's disease because it's ten to fifteen minutes. It's episodic. All right, improves itself, comes and goes. Everything rotating, ears blocked, cannot hear properly. All right, this is this is also an um, important thing. Ears blocked, uh, or uh, she might say uh, uh, she, he might say that um, uh, fullness of ears. So this is uh, something that indicates it, it is Meniere's disease. Again, the functional diagnosis, the uh, Do you have any problems with hearing? Okay, there's a hearing, hearing loss as well. There would be hearing loss. All right. If there's a hearing loss, there, then there are two things, Meniere's and labyrinthitis. Now you, you need to, to differentiate how on the basis of vertigo. So it's 10 to 15 minutes, so it's not labyrinthitis. Now it's clear that it's Meniere's disease. Vestibular neuritis, uh, it's flu-like illness. You would ask that, uh, have you, um, do you, did you have any flu-like illness in the past one week? Meniere's and the caustic neuroma. Have you lost weight? 
All right, these are three to four differential diagnoses. Just differentially diagnosed on the basis of the questions that you need to ask. All right. How did you arrive today? Ask about driving and address. If he has come here with, uh, by driving, then address. You need to uh, inform DVLA, otherwise, it's fine. Ask about occupation. Ask about family history. Okay. And um, uh, now this, uh, the time comes after taking history, the current time comes for observation, ENT, and neurological examination. Um, everything would be normal on the meniere's disease affects nerves involving in hearing and balance. Not curable, but cannot be improved the treatment. Okay, so there's a treatment available that uh, we can we can stop worsening of the symptoms, but it's not curable. Just be honest with the patient. Don't say that uh, you can get better with the time. No, be honest. It's not a curable disease. Okay, all right. Then. Uh, uh, discuss further management about uh, BLIs and uh, refer to ENT routinely. They will confirm diagnosis, DVLA. Uh, they are certain medicines, procopazine for vomiting, beta histine, to prevent further attacks, and leaflets, the important thing. And safety netting and warning signs. Now, these are the important things. He might ask you questions or you need to address. If, uh, what, what to do if you are having attacks? Uh, at first sight, you need to take what type of medicine during an attack. What you need to do uh, if uh, there is a medicine, there is a medicine near you by you, just take it. Sit down and lie down. Close your eyes. Uh, keep them fixed on a still object. Do not turn your head quickly. And if you need to, if you need to move, do it slowly. So you need to remember these four to five points. And during the management, you need to address it. You need to tell the patient these are uh, these carry good marks in the management portion because uh, you're telling the patient that what to do during, during the during the attacks and treating severe attacks you need to uh, there's a possibility that there will be some uh, you need to run a and run to a and e they will give you some injections now there are preventions again the medicines beta histine and propoprazine two medicines that are needed for prevention and foods. There's no proper study, but uh, it is uh, people claim that uh, those all diet alcohol, caffeine, and smoking avoid these uh, uh, triggers, uh, avoid, the, avoid these um, type of episodes. Driving under the risks. Uh, so there are the risks. Uh, they are before, uh, before doing such activities, you need, you need to be aware that uh, you should not go for such activities that can worsen or that can damage your life. Such activities are driving, swimming, climbing ladders, operating heavy machinery. This is important. Why in the in the occupation, when you would ask the patient that what do you do for a living? Doctor, I, I do like cleaning of the buildings. I operate heavy machinery. Then you need to address accordingly. That's why occupation is important again. So then drive, address driving and safety netting. Again, that's a Meniere's disease, differentiate between Meniere's disease, PPVB, vegetable nitrous and abenthitis. Uh, do not forget uh, to ask about driving, about um, uh, occupation, effects of life. And address them in the management portion and what to do when he is having attacks. That's it. Now, it's the BPV. Again, history would be same, same vertigo episodes, but last for 30 seconds. Four to five days, uh, I feel dizzy. Everything around me is spinning since four to five days, sudden onset, three times a day, episodes 30 seconds. When I move my head, it worsens. Okay. So you are ever doing GP. Mr. Leon Jackson, age 45, has come to you and with the dizziness. Please talk to him, address him, and address concerns. All right. Again, nothing will be given outside the cubicle. Uh, you're going to ask uh, such these questions. A uh, patient will give you all the history. Now things are getting clear. It's 30 second episodes. It could be BBB or uh, there are no uh, loss of hearing. There are nothing with the, uh, nothing like this. So it's uh, it it worsens with the moving of the head. So it is uh, uh, making uh, your mind that it could be BBB. Other differential diagnosis, same, meniere, the bronchitis, the neuritis, or costume neuron. 
need to differentially diagnose the uh, differentiate these things and take your history ask about effects of life uh, social history eyes uh, do you have any concerns or expectations or uh, then go for examination M mention um, observations and then go for the health like maneuver examiner would give you these findings positive upward and left direction Okay, if you do not mention Dix Dix Halpite maneuver, the examiner would not give you any any, any findings. Remember, if uh, you are thinking that your diagnosis is BPVV or Meniere's any condition that is associated with vertigo, you just mention this this uh, this examination this the Dix Halpite, so that you do not miss the important findings. So when you would mention it, the examiner would give you these findings. Now it's clear that it's VPVV. Now it's the time to do explain diagnosis. From my assessment, you are experiencing, experiencing something which we call BPPV. The condition of inner ear, it's too much, but uh, you can just uh, explain it one to two lines. Then what is the management? It's epilene maneuver. And how it is done? There are four different movements of the head and uh, there are 30 seconds break in between them. Eight to 10 cases just got treated with one treatment, but uh, there's a possibility that uh, we need to run more sessions to, uh, to get benefited. Then there are more exercises. You do not need to mention it, but it's for your knowledge that if uh, you do not have anything to say, you can mention these exercises. Again, Inform DVLA. Ask about driving. Inform DVLA, and if uh, if he uses ladders or great heavy machinery, you should um, discuss it with your employer. You should uh, leave this job, and uh, uh, you could discuss with union council for more jobs. Um, get out slowly from the bed. Sit down immediately. Try to relax your anxiety. And if you are having these attacks. Do the same as in the Meniere's disease. Try to uh, fix, okay? Close your eyes and keep them fixed. And still object, do not turn your head quickly and do these things when you are having episode of vertigo. All right, so this, uh, these are the questions that uh, the patient might ask you. Is it serious? Okay, it's, it's not that serious, uh, it's, uh, but uh, it, it is uh, it is the condition that it is lifelong, uh, but there are the things that uh, the patient get benefited with that please maneuver, but some patients do not get benefited. So we need to run more sessions. So after that, we will be able to at a better position position tell you whether it is curable or not. We will go away. We will try our best. We will try to arrange some sessions. After that, we will be able to tell you whether it will go away on its own or not. Is there any treatment? Uh, these are the maneuvers that we can do. Okay. So explain. Um, it's for your understanding. And if he asks about what is VPPV, then you can explain this word by word. Then what does benign means? What is proxismal, certain short spells, and positional and vertigo? You can explain this if you get uh, enough time to explain. Um, in the real settings, you will not get enough time to explain about PPVV like this. All right, let's move towards our third last scenario that is acoustic neuroma. This is a tumor and remember, um, do not forget to ask about weight loss. Okay, it comes with uh, uh, balance problems, dizziness, numbness of the face. That is one thing that is differentiating and um, hearing loss. This is the hearing difficulty on left side. Okay, start your station well. Simple, you enter the room, grapes, with any complaints, take a good proper history. And after that, uh, these are the differential diagnoses. Uh, rule out all these diagnoses and then go for uh, further um, ask about uh, what is wrong and um, she uh, he would ask about, uh, about what is wrong, what are you going to do and basic investigations. Uh, this the approach is same. The approach is same like the previous two stations. The difference would be uh, in the weight loss and in the examination. Uh, and the, when you will be doing the cranial nerves examination seven or eight, 
Uh, they will show you the, the dimensional findings, and uh, you need to explain the tumor of canal nerves eight. And uh, this is the management plan, basic investigations, agent chapter to ELT, audiometry, MRI brain, and safety netting. That is the important thing. Uh, if uh, you feel any high fever, sudden weight loss or weakness, just visit extent emergency. Okay. So it's the tinnitus. Our second last uh, scenario for two days. Uh, and about acoustic neuroma, the history would be same, everything would be same, just a weight loss and can examination, you, you can diagnose it easily. Tinnitus, noise induced hearing loss, or it's a simple tinnitus. It comes in two ways. Either the patient would be working in a noisy environment. Um, okay, so is a works in a factory or he doesn't work in a factory. Uh, he just uh, worked as, on a, as, on a, as a cab driver. Then it comes in two ways. Either noise induced or simple tinnitus. You need to again rule out the differential diagnosis. All these differential diagnoses that you need to rule out. This question would be same. What is wrong? What will you do? Okay, I need to run some uh, examinations or tests. Perform examinations. Hey, loss due to um, due to noisy environment. If it is it's uh, noise induced hearing loss, then uh, well uh, I have made uh, this mnemonic when I, I was preparing for PLAB two. It's A for admission, inform, investigation, treatment, warning signs, and uh, safety and follow up or safety netting after that. So I uh, I usually follow this approach. So you can also follow this urgent ENT referral if I was confirmed that might change that uh, you might need to change job. And if he's a cab driver, if it's not noise induced, then there's no need to mention about job uh, or shift duties. You can just read about this. So it's uh, noise induced having lost tinnitus. Remember, tinnitus comes in two ways noise induced or just simple hearing loss. This is idiopathic. This scenario uh, doesn't come nowadays, it, it came just before the COVID. Uh, it's uh, it's just a hearing loss, no proper history, no tinnitus, nothing, nothing else, just a hearing loss, nothing important you will be finding. And at the end, if there's a hearing loss, you need to refer to the important is refer to the ENT. In such scenarios where you find you find nothing, they check your safety. What are the safety steps? These important uh, four to five important points you need to do not forget to mention or ask questions about these four to five, um, th these are four to five important, uh, these are six to seven important uh, points. Uh, so in such scenarios in which there's no nothing to find, you need to ask about driving, effects of life, occupation, family history, concerns, and uh, if driving, DVLA, and safety settings and warning signs. So that's it. So, we, so today uh, we have done with prostate examination, endoscopy, giant cell arthritis, of thermo, uh, of thermo, uh, thermology, we have done uh, four scenarios. What is this? Okay. And uh, for the year, we have done five scenarios. Now I am uh, I am posting uh, this uh, endoscopy examination. Just uh, go through the video, and we are done for two days class. Uh, go through this video and if you have any questions just let me know and do not forget uh, always show safety always show that you are a safe doctor this is the picture of uh, 
Correct. Remember, you will find similar picture in exam. Uh, hello. Hello. No. Can you hear me? That's great. Okay, okay. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, just let me know when you are done with the video, with the endoscopic examination. All right, that's great. So uh, any questions so far? Remember always, oh, sorry, sorry, it's everyone is what happens. Uh, sorry, it's, it's correct message. All right. So remember always in I and E scenarios, do not forget uh, these these important points: driving effects on life, occupation, family history concerns, and form DVLA, safety netting, and warning signs. And uh, there are differential diagnostic questions you can ask. You have to differentiate all these things and. In ear examinations, uh, this table is important. Differentiate three important scenarios: VP, V, Binet's disease, and vestibular neuritis. This this uh, table is important. Just uh, just make a picture in your mind. Uh, you will um, you will it will be easier for you to diagnose condition in the ear exam. So that's all. That's the end of today's class. Thank you so much, everyone.